What's up? What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray DeVito. What's going on, guys? Um, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors. First of all, if you're watching on video, L-I-C-K, I guess Lick, uh, but they're Long Island City Kicks. Uh, they gave me a free sweatshirt if I mention they're, uh, they're on Steinway Street in Astoria. It's pretty cool. Oh, they're not giving you money, just shirts? No, they just gave me a sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll shout out your, po- or, uh, What's your store. It's better than money. Yeah. So I like how they gave me a sweatshirt that said uh, lonely. So they nailed, <laughs> they nailed it. They get your brand. Yeah. And then uh, I got a SilkCityHotSauce.com. Check them out. Oh, they're great. Yes. Put in. Uh, I'm getting a hot sauce, by the way, Karen. It's first of all, their hot sauce is actually delicious. It and is. I awesome. don't like hot sauce. Which and, one's your favorite? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a good question. There's different ones. Yeah, I, I don't I, really know. I go so with they, sent, they sent me a couple like different ones. They sent me like ten. Yeah, and they were all. Oh, really you got good. some too? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! I love it, but it's it is. Uh, some of them are way hotter than the other ones. They're delicious. I like They're the hottest ones. Great. Well, you know they put they. they well, put let me shut out their website so though. Sorry. Silk <laughs> SilkCityHotSauce.com. Can I make about me? Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. SilkCityHotSauce.com. <laughs> put in G Hole, save fifteen percent on everything. And before we get to that, I also want to say VictoryPost.com. Uh, goat milk soaps and deodorants. I smell amazing. I use Victory Pose. Put in code Raymond, say 15%, get free shipping on your first order. Um, yeah, but go back. I, I like Ghost Whisper. I like the hottest uh, that they have. I haven't tried that. I've had that. But I, I, isn't there one called named after like Jew or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's a, <laughs> I think there is one. Oh, that's uh, Aaron like, Berg's. B- oh, b- is it? Badass, uh, yeah. badass Jew. Yeah, that yeah. Is, yeah, so I'm not making that up. Yeah, There's it's named a, after a comedian, Aaron Burr. Kanye's favorite one. They made a, a <laughs> Bloody Mary mix. Shout out to Rob Saul, who I forgot yeah. to shout out the other day when I was talking about Bloody Mary mix. So this, I'm making up for it. But they made he made his own, I guess. He's Let me introduce tender. you like, guys no real quick. Oh, okay. Karen, Mar- K- Karen Margolis. Um, <laughs> if, they're already if, like, fuck this shit. If you're, uh, you, you plug your website and everything. Where can people find you, Karen? Um, I do have a website, but it's not good. It's uh, KarenMargolis.com. There's nothing on it. <laughs> but you can find me on Instagram, Karen Margolis, K-E-R-E-N-M-A-R-G-O-L-I-S. Nice. And then I got Tom McCaffrey. Go ahead, plug your, your stuff, Tom. Tom McCaffrey. Hi. Very funny comedian. Um, yeah, I'm Tom McCaffrey. And I, I, I have a website. It has some stuff on it. And um, I'm on, you know, all the all the shit. Instagram, um, TikTok, Twitter. And uh, I have a book coming out. Should I bring it up now? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into your books. Okay. I want to talk about it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Can I ask you something? But do, is K-E-R-E-N, is that the actual spelling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't change cool. it just because it's a meme. Oh, re- okay. Right, right. No, I, didn't, right. I didn't change it. Yeah, it's my given name. And it is Karen. It is. It's not, okay. It's a, it's a biblical name. It's Hebrew. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you so that much. But it's K E. I mean, you know. It helps me out now. <laughs> I think it would. Yeah, but I'm sure it gets spe- misspelled all I the time. I get Karen every day. Yeah, every day of my life. Karen. It's so nasally. I, like I don't love that. Karen. Yeah. It feels more like back of the throat. I forgot that that name sort of got messed up for a little bit. It did. I'm, I think it'll pass. I think people have already kind of moved on from it. Yeah, I have. but it's in the cultural memory. Well, you like, know Karen. where it started from. Um, it was Dane Cook did a bit about like there's always a a white woman complaining. This is like 15 years ago. It's like her name's always Karen. I didn't know that. And that's, yeah, it started as a Dane Cook bit. Fuck you, Dane Cook. Dane. Yeah. Just another reason to hate Dane <laughs> yeah. Cook. No, I'm I always just kidding. loved it. He was the He's first like, comic that I liked. Because I liked I, him a lot. I didn't yeah. like grow up around comedy or anything. We just had that one Dane Cook album or whatever that yeah. everybody kept listening to. When I first started comedy, I, I started in LA and, and, uh, and he was just coming up, and a lot of comedians, I, we all thought he was great. And then I he moved to great. New York, and everyone and everyone hated him. And I, I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> but to he was fair, good. It was he like a Tupac Biggie thing. He appealed to you know thirteen year old girls a lot. Yeah, I think that's why I liked him so much. <laughs> when, <laughs> I was, when I was a twenty seven year old man. Well, I remember like not like when um, what was that that Torgasm thing? He always had to come out as like the hero or whatever what like, do you mean like a- everything that happened like on that tour it was like him robert kelly gary goldman i forget who the other the other guy was jay Son- i forgot his name but he booked this room called dublin's in la and that's where dane cook was like the king of that room when i was in la in like 2000 just starting comedy so that jay davis that's why he got that's who it was that's why he got on the tour guys that he wasn't really a great but, comedian. But everything would show like everyone else's <laughs> faults, and he was always like the hero of the moment, which uh-huh. I always thought was like, it can't always be 
Like, what's it, the hero of the moment though? What is that I, mean? I, I, whatever confrontation was going on, it was always like everyone else had a problem with something, and he's like the solution maker. Oh, he was Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he. That's what he called yeah, but, himself. But Lu- Lu- <laughs> Lewis, <laughs> yeah. and it was no one got it at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was before his time. Yeah. is what we're saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, Lewis will get like upset and like uh, like uh, yell yell and stuff. Well, I was going to say. Really I was going to say. I fucking care. I feel like I saw a video where, where Lewis was not working things out with people. He doesn't care. It's kidding. for the it's for the brand. That's what I like about it. I'm like, yeah. good for you. You like just start shit. Doesn't no, I just, care, I'm, moves just on. I'm just talking about that one. Bit. He gets really mad in the video. What? At, like what? the comedy store. The oh, the thing oh, with Kurt. That's yeah, the, yeah. No, that was real. Yeah. yeah that no, was no, I know. He, I mean, he didn't look like he was working yeah. things out at that point. No, and I don't think they ever have. Have I, they not? No, I think I, they, they have. did for a moment, they, they, and I, I don't know. I, I think it's resolved. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I don't, that's not. I can't speak on it, but yeah. But you know, I know what? both Once those have... guys, and I just both, want to reignite both, that yeah. beef. That's yes, why I'm here. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Let's just start some yeah. shit among adults <laughs> who don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in fact, so we're in Lewis's studio right now. So we got to <laughs> We got. Yeah. Screw Kurt Metzger. What no. a bastard. Oh. No, I'm kidding. I love Kurt. Can I, I just Kurt say too. before I, I met? I remember when I met Lewis. I, he he was just like a. Uh, he was promoting shows. Oh, open mic Lewis, yeah. And he was right. super like he Aggressive. really was nice to me. Like he oh, really he liked oh. me. Like oh, he, he would was... always book me on shows. Oh, okay. Is super that nice wasn't my guy. experience. Uh, with early Lewis. All right, that wasn't this my is not all, okay, right. all right. I don't want to, I'm not in this Later guy's studio. Lewis, yeah, super you nice guy. guys can do this stuff uh, off air. I, I just, actually I just, I just, let's go back to being Jewish. But then like I and then I moved away and then I moved back and he was like the king of I was like, Oh wow, things have what what did I miss? I was gone for like a year and a half. Where'd you go? I was in LA for like a year and a half. I thought you were in LA before you went to before you came here. I Back when I to, was the Dane you? Cook when when I when I liked Dane Cook like two thousand right and then I moved here and everyone hated him and then I went back to LA in like two thousand eleven. How like they feel about Dane half. Cook then? They hated him. No, I don't. I, I don't it, th- that was when Dane Cook. Everyone kind of. T- I think he was kind of gone. Remember when he kind of disappeared because everyone like turned on him. Because everyone yeah. t- became an adult. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. moved on to other comedy, d- and then he kind of came back. I did notice though as I watched him, because I was new to comedy. It, it, he did do a lot of like, hey, you ever like see a dinosaur? <laughs> and then he would just yeah. make noises, and it was like. Oh, that's not you. You know, I really want robot legs. And I was like, oh, he's just kind of making noises. Yeah, that... we all wish we came up with that. But a killer yeah. dinosaur bit. <laughs> yeah, I remember you had one for a while. Who me? Yeah, I'm just oh, getting yeah, out yeah, yeah. Um, Should have kept it. Yeah, yeah. It was he was his whole thing was like I remember liking him, but his whole thing was like obnoxious, where he like act out jokes. He like, was really good yeah. at acting out. He was really good at acting things out. That's and LA that's, comedy. That's to a. Me. I was gonna say that's yeah. a huge LA comedy. Yeah, thing. LA comedy is like you say one thing, right? It's just a premise, and then you act it out for seven minutes, right? And that's it's, your bit. Yeah, exactly. I but, don't hate. I'm not. Listen, but see, the I, thing is, I didn't know. I had just started comedy, so I was like, you, you know, when you like you start comedy, you, you're you're figuring it out. You're like, I, am I supposed to do that? Right. Or am I supposed to do that? Right. right and right. then you go to New York, and New York is more like they hate that shit. Yeah, and they're more like, like don't act your dumb premise out. They're just aloof. Tell us a joke. Yeah, right. or they'll act it out, but not as. Um, Did you do anything obnoxious on? Like, I remember my first big joke, and I'd go on the road with doing it. I remember doing a crocodile hunter impression because I'm an idiot. But like <laughs> Dude, that 2001, that was the era. Like yeah. a lot of crocodile hunter bits. I would uh, that I do a joke about being Italian and like we just want a woman to rub her fingers through her hair like her, and then I would pull down my pants and there'd be a big hairy bushy wig in my underpants. And I'd be like, "Come on, lady, just oh, run." You, you, you didn't like do that. I did. Yes, you I did? did that, dude. I'm. I was brand new in a comedy. <laughs> I was a kid. I was brand new in a comedy. Look at the excuses. No, we. But, but he and I yeah. didn't do that. It, it, I would always. I did to not be do fair, that. Yeah. No, I did not. We were also brand new in comedy yeah. once. I was figuring things out, but I knew not to. That was the one. No, thing I, I knew did. That. Dude, yeah. I started in Ohio, and I would do that, and I would crush, and I would always do it early in the sh- set. Because I didn't want that wake in my pants for long. Like, I wanted it out. So it was like in the first three minutes, I would do that joke. And then remove then, it and put it where? Yeah. And then when I started going on the road, because um, I'd feature on the road early just because, like, a lot of headliners just needed someone to drive them around. And I would do that and, like, it'd be sitting on the stage for, like, 20 minutes. And sometimes people would steal the stupid wig. Why? It's and like, it why would you want genitals. that? That was the in other my... comedians trying to sabotage no, it. No, uh... it's... full of monkeypox. Like, why do yeah. you want yeah. it? People would take the wig... F- 
from time to time, which just I to fuck with you, which I never got. No, it was like people in the crowd. There's probably oh. a like guy bachelorette parties. There's and probably shit. a guy in the road right now doing that bit. Go, right go ahead and do it. <laughs> go, go ahead and. Do I it. never did like any prop. Thing. What, what's Me the most either. obnoxious shit you ever did on stage? I, I feel like early on. I, I, you know, I'm I'm very low and key and aloof, mm-hmm. so that was always kind of my thing. But I, you know, I did the like I would early on. I think you do this. I would talk about retarded people because it's like an easy <laughs> joke, you know, like yeah, yeah. So it's retarded. I, I had a joke. It actually like it's mean, and I figured out early not to do it. But I thought it was kind of funny. I was saying like. If you're going to be a teacher, I think the easiest teacher would be if you were teaching retarded kids because at the end of the year, if they're not reading, yeah, like, like no one's really going to notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then a parent teacher, they like, hey, he doesn't seem to be getting better. I'm like, look, he's just, he's really retarded. I don't know what, I, I can't yeah. really do anything. So, but, but it was, I knew early, like, it it was just like a cheap joke, you know. What yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I, I mean, stopped. it's funny though. I, you just can't say that anymore. But well, now, yeah, that's yeah. like. But even then, it was like, yeah, that's. Ha- it, it was sort of like thought of as hacky. Right. So. Yeah, but hack. Here's the thing. I'm not like really opposed to hacky if it's funny. Like funny's funny. What's, funny doesn't mean not. What did you do that? You're, do you have any hacky yeah. jokes that you thought were really hacky? I feel early like on? all my jokes. I listen. Are, are any of us not hacky? Like you know, people are like that's hacky. Are you really sitting here telling me you don't do anything hacky? Give me a break. Um, I talk about my vagina. Like I do all that stuff. You know. Yeah. Like, I also talk comics about your talk vagina. About- yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also like camera goes for vagina. Seriously, rave reviews. That I is assume. hacky. <laughs> yeah. That's hacky. Yeah, Seinfeld was doing that for a while. Early. No, By kidding. the way, I will say this: there are like jokes I would do that I quit doing, or even jokes like I do a joke, but like it used to be okay to say the word fag on stage. Mm. Like, it wasn't even that long ago. I used to have a joke, which I, I get it. I don't say it anymore. But I remember doing a joke. I, I do a joke about my cleft chin where I, I get called a lot of names like butt chin or ass face or uh, faggot with a dimple. Mm-hmm. And that was a, and like that used to get like a big laugh. And then like four years ago, it quit it's getting... Funny, though. It, it's true. It, it quit get, Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the whole point of that joke. It's like butt chin. No, it's all, great. And then the other one is just... No, it's... It's just, just them own. calling me. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah it's great. And the whole, the whole, the whole thing of the joke, which I do it sometimes still, is the fact not with the that the word faggot in it, but the fact that. Uh, oh, you were never going to try out for SNL, are you? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> just flinging this word around. <laughs> no, well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Gonna no, I up. don't. I don't say that now. But um, I mean, I'm saying it now in context to say what I used I know, to say. But, you but know, there was what, what's a context you know, even. Yeah. But there was a time where that was like okay, and it wasn't even that long ago to say it on stage. I'm fine not saying saying it on stage. I don't. Mm-hmm. But you the whole thing it. is you like sound fine with it. Yeah, but the whole thing is uh, the joke was that the actual payoff. It's like some kids making fun of my face. My teacher yelled at him, quit making fun of his birth defect. Mm-hmm. So the whole thing is like the clap chin being a birth defect. And then it goes off from there, which is, which is the birth defect you want if you have to have one. But no, just the fact that you could say that on stage, and it just one day, like five years ago, they decided, like, no, you can't say that on, which is fine. When was the last time you said it on stage? Um, maybe like five years ago. And then I was like, I just don't say that on stage. I don't really do that joke. I rarely do that joke. But if I was to do it, I obviously would not say that. Part I, 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 I have a joke where I say that. Right? I, and I haven't done it in a couple of years, but I remember the last time I did it, I was like, I'm about to say this. Let's see how it goes. And oh, really? And it did well, but I, it, I think it's because I'm kind of doing it as another person, and I'm not mm. doing it in context of like making fun of someone gay or an, it's right, not in right. a gay context. You, you know, you know that Louis C.K. bit where he talks about that word. Do you know that? What? Yeah, yeah. He, he his whole thing is he's he misses that word because when he said it growing which is true of my when i was growing up too yeah but i was called that word it didn't mean gay it Mm -hmm. wasn't like you're a gay person it meant you were being like annoying Mm -hmm. so he's like you know i wouldn't even he's like i wouldn't even call a gay person a faggot he's like unless they were being a faggot you know (laughs) if if i saw a guy blowing another guy and he stopped and looked at me and went you know people from phoenix are called phoenicians like like, shut up faggot like stop being a faggot and suck that guy's dick but that i mean i feel like that was such a brilliant way of of, of describing that word you know what i mean speaking of which like right like there's a bill burr bit i heard on sirius xm because i'll listen to sirius sirius xm where he uses the n-word but he's making fun of his relative saying that that word but there's obviously no way in this day and age he would do that joke also he's a like uh it was a it was a funny bit because it's him making fun of his relatives but like 
there's no way, like, even if it's a clever bit, I'm not telling can, anyone man. they can't. Like, I, I feel like it, I remember Zach Galifianakis had a joke where he would say the N word. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah. that was I also mean, like a while ago. did too, Louis not that CK. long ago. Yeah. Not that long ago. And yeah, it was. But there's certain words like, why do it? Like, if you're going to use words like the words we. We're just referencing. If even you're the not Louis C.K., don't. Bother. I think that's true. I think what, and why take the or risk? Zach Galifianakis. I think Zach Galifianakis was such a good comedian. He was doing it in such a way that he could get away. And I almost yeah. think it's a flex by a really good comedian mm-hmm. being like, I can get away with it because I'm so. Those comedians, you know, who like are so good, they're kind of like pushing how far they can can go. You but know they're what I mean? so good. But it's two. I think it's a two part. It's like you're so good that you can make the joke really good. But also you're famous enough already that people are going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Right. Because if yeah. you're like coming up, you could be a great comic and people are going to be like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, exactly. So they and it was also like when they when Zach Galifianakis was doing it was like 2002. So it was, you know, it was still that On era. Cusp, of, yeah, it was. It was, it, was def- it was still like edgy, but it was. You could get away with it. Well, that. while we're on this topic, let's talk about your book uh, okay, that's good coming segue. out. <laughs> nice no, no, because it's, a, it's about comedy on the Lower East Side. Yeah. Back when Rafifi was a thing, which I got. I, oh, I, yeah. do, you, do you remember the whole Lower East Side, like the it whole was like, alt comedy scene? It was like a little before I started comedy, but yeah, I remember that whole scene. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind. Of, okay. It's just kind of chronicles because I moved back to New York like 2002. And then I was kind of trying to like get into clubs. That's when I and just stuff. started doing comedy. Oh, really? Like, yeah. You were still doing your wig bush thing. Yeah, yeah, dude. That that's was your when bush I... era. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, um, that's when I because Jesse Joyce was. Uh, I met my, him my right around friend. that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And he moved from oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. I came from Cleveland. And then he's like, "Oh, you're moving it." Like, so I think happened? I met you at first around that time, actually. Yeah. What happened to Jesse Joyce? He's one of the head writers on Kimmel. He's doing. Shut up! He's do, oh, he's he, doing fine. Yeah, I was a little behind the scenesy. He's doing. Yeah, he's fantastic. the big writer, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah. he. So I he used to write Comedy Central roast. Right. And yes, he, yeah, he right. wrote for. I remember that. Yeah, he. Um, well, he was good friends with Geraldo. They were both in recovery together. Right. Um, but so anyway, but not two two thousand two. I was kind of like. The alt scene was kind of a thing in L.A., but it was still kind of newish here. And so I was trying to get into clubs, but it was, like, really hard to get into clubs. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really break in. And then, like, I was doing shows kind of downtown, and then people would be like, hey, you should do this show. And then it kind of – those were the shows that booked me. And then I started getting booked at Rafifi because they were just starting to do shows. And so I kind of got in on the ground floor there. And and there was a lot of cool people, too. Like, Andre Dubache was great. Well, him. And, you know, it was like Dimitri was kind of the guy. Dimitri Martin. Well, Dimitri Martin I didn't know well. But, like, Patrick Borelli, who's very funny dude. Borelli was, yeah. And they they were, like, really cool. Like, I got into that scene. And you know me, just sitting there doing crocodile uh, Hunter impressions and fucking uh, having a wig in my pants like that's definitely not yeah but like it was like the scene that was like the nut- Sean Conroy who had that uh, show at UCB yeah then I ended up having that show with Dan Allen right uh, Sacapuntas oh which yeah was, Dan Allen yeah. what happened to Dan Allen he's married uh, he's how do you feel about this? I'm, uh, he <laughs> he he uh, uh-huh. was always on Jewish websites. Trying to date Jewish women, even though he He's wasn't Jewish. Jewish, and he would lie and say he was Jewish. Let's say, oh, he would lie. He would lie and say he was Jewish. Oh, okay. See, for me, the, then, he would have a better chance. This is me speaking personally. Not every Jewish girl's like this, but he'd just have a better chance just being like, "Hey, I'm not Jewish," because I'm right, like, yeah. I don't. You, you, there's some you, Jewish girls you don't really gravitate towards Jewish guys. Is that how? You, is that how you were? That's how I she's, am. She's like, I'll right. gravitate. Yeah. Were you always like that? Yeah. yeah. What, did you ever date Jewish guys? No. No. You just weren't attracted to them? You don't like back hair? I don't. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Jewish I, girls I, I are so hair, pretty. So. Jewish girls are like, not not every, you know, in yeah. general, Jewish girls are like pretty smoking hot. And this is not a compliment to myself. Yeah, saying. I went to I went to camp. I went to I've been I've been around like the hottest chicks, right? Who right. are like all Jewish. I'm just like, wow, yeah. And I live in South Williamsburg, so mad Orthodox Jews. The girls are like really pretty. Yeah, I, I, really I, I pretty. was always in I was in a Jew. I, I was on one of those Jewish well, dating sites early on, J Swipe. Well, it was one of the first ones I got on. Really? Yeah. But you're so not Jewish. Um, thank you. Well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you're welcome. You. No, 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 you did it right. <laughs> no, um, 
people have thought I was Jewish though in the really? past. Really? Like, yeah. No, I think... you come across so not Jewish. Okay. That's... Yeah. No, I just I don't I know actually what it is. Do, every, I'm always about to say thank you, but then I always feel like I don't think I'm allowed to say yeah. thank you to that. Yeah, that you feels can, very okay. Like, I'll um, just do it for you. you. You're welcome. Yeah. That, I think you mean it as a compliment. I really do, okay. and I like no disrespect to Jewish guys, even though I am disrespecting them right now saying this. But I just yeah. Why do you not like Jewish dudes? Um, I think there's an aesthetic component <laughs> where I like people who are like tall and attractive, but <laughs> wow, that's... wow, all right. But, oh. but I, I, listen, I met some tall, attractive Jews, but they're they get married like young, you know what I mean? Uh, like they, they, they get, get snapped so, uh, up. Is there a vibe? So, is there like a uh, an energy that Jewish guys have? So I like a guy that's like Wait, this, they is, my, have this energy? is my type. What? Are, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, so when you peel off their skin and get to the lizard part, yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I like a I I like kind of a throwback guy who's like very like a guy guy. Like they don't even really make him like that anymore. All right, well like, I'm out. I'm not a, I'm not a guy guy. <laughs> I just I have a type. What can I say? If you look through my dating history, you're like, oh, she like this is what she likes. But do that's... you like a guy who um, will like kill bugs for you? I mean, <laughs> I know that's, I had a girl once say to that'd me, "That'd be like, ideal." No, but I mean, like, do I have to kill my own bugs? But is that what you're telling me? I like I was dating a girl once, and like, how I about saw a guy a who has a place that doesn't have bugs? Let's start with a place that doesn't have bugs. Well, but I mean, you might be somewhere out, and there might be a bug. I dated a girl once, and like, I saw she was like, "Oh, there's a bug," and I ran, and she was like, "Well, I guess you're <laughs> not going to be killing spiders, type guy," and I'm like. No, I'm not an exterminator. Yeah, if yeah, that's yeah. I'm not well, I'm thing. not going there's, to be killing bugs. If I if I'm on my own and there's a bug and I have to kill it, I'll kill it, you know? Right. I'm an adult and you handle your business, but it it's more like a it's kind of like a paying on the first date kind of thing where it's like, yes, I can pay for my meal obviously, but it's nice if you do it because it's like a kind of a masculine thing to do. So, it's attractive. It's not a financial thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Is it was like the, with the bugs, it's not like I can't do it, but it just makes me feel like cute and feminine when you no, do I, it. I know, I know. You have to um, be be able to kill bugs. You have to be a man, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of bug was this that you were not? <laughs> you know, a mosquito. No, a mosquito. Just, no. It was like it was. I was out in like the the country. It was like in the Hamptons at night, and you know, there's like bugs everywhere. Like real bugs. Like yeah. you know, and there was a huge bug that flew like at my head, and I, you know, I kind of like went like. Well, that's you know, I wasn't bug. immediately that's just a, like. Yeah. I, but I mean, she meant it kind of as a joke. Like, oh, I guess you, I just thought it was. But you a guys funny... are no longer together, so. Um, it no, wasn't we a are joke. actually. But are you? Yeah, yeah. But it was <laughs> the funniest thing about it is I totally like ran, jumped off the deck, and we went inside. Her dad. It was like her parents' house, and her dad was like, like her dad saw that and was like. Oh well, it's nice to know. <laughs> Jeez. My daughter's in trouble, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, look, I mean, it was a big bug. Like, what? jeez. Speaking of which, uh, back to the like, I don't know if you guys, <laughs> I don't know how I got on that. Really like a bunch this. of uh, <laughs> Kyrie Irving, the Nets point guard. Okay. Put, put up a, he's, a tweet. It was called uh, what's the name of the movie that he played? It's a movie from 1998 that Ronald Dalton Jr. He Hebrews to Negroes. Okay. Where he, he's saying that. Uh, it, I just saw like you. Can, it got four four to ten on IMDb. It's uh, it sounds high for that was, movie. Um, yeah, she, yeah, that's <laughs> no. It's it's like uh, it's it's in, was that, uh, got trash. It's, was it's that Scorsese? Born, it's saying Jewish people, <laughs> uh, Jewish people ran black people out of Israel. That it was black and. And oh, that's Jewish like a black people. Israelite yeah, kind of yeah. thing, yeah. And uh, like they're the true Hebrews, and, and it's very anti-Semitic. Yeah. That is anti-Semitic. And the NBA did not suspend Kyrie Irving. Um, no one has really came out in uh, the NBA. A bunch of people like NBA. So I would only know of this. Be- I only know of it because of the backlash it got. But the fact that uh, Kyrie Irving tweeted that didn't uh, didn't take it down. Um, tweeted yeah, it recently. Yeah, yeah, a few days ago. But he. <laughs> that so takes some a balls. bunch <laughs> of uh, a bunch of G- uh, Jewish people came out and protested the game last night. Okay. At Barclays Center. Oh, okay. I don't know if they actually went in the game. As we do. But there was. Were they uh, like, oh, did they leave early? Like, it's too cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Well, well, Kyrie Irving played like crap. The Nets lost, and he um, he's a very good. He's probably the best shooter in the NBA. I, I don't like Kyrie because he. Why is he so? Cavaliers. When did he become so crazy? He's he's out of. He's always kind of been out of his mind because okay. I'm from Cleveland. He was our. There's oh, a right, reason why right. we yeah, stunk. Yeah. While he was on our team, because he gets along with none of his teammates, mm-hmm. and then we had LeBron, and he didn't get along with LeBron, mm-hmm. and now he's gone to Boston, got along with none of those players. Now he's in Brooklyn, he gets along with. So he's never gotten along with any of his teammates. Mm-hmm. We won the championship the one year, but that's because it was LeBron was the right. guy, and Kyrie was just kind of like the side guy. Yeah. 
So and that only lasted one three year. years. So three um, years we won it once, but yeah. three years and Kyrie's like, screw this, I want out. So he's not he's like a weird dude, but he is a great basketball player. But uh, so a bunch. Well, of, I mean, at least you know he's jumping on the anti-Semitic thing, which is a good yeah. that'll help his brand. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, hot right now. Yeah, but it's you know I feel like. Well, how do you guys feel about that? Kind like, of hedging his bets because you know if a black person does it, then it's different than if a white person. Yeah, does if a it. white person did it, it would have been like over. Like, well, here's the deal: Kanye just said all that anti-Semitic stuff. I think I'm it saying, started to transition and into he black got people d- too. And, but Adidas, like <laughs> Adidas, yeah. waited. Everybody was like, "We're waiting, Adidas. We're waiting for you to say something about this." And they were like, "Oh, we're done with Yeezy and so, blah blah blah." Yeah. So everyone dumped him. Now, why yeah. is Kyrie? Do, uh, do you think Kyrie's uh, sponsors? Because he's got a shoe with Nike mm-hmm. that they should um, dump him. What it, or is that? Too... But what did he? What, so I'm. But here's the thing. I'm missing context. So we just tweeted about this movie that already exists. Yeah, and he's like, everyone should go check this out. Oh, okay. So it's it's anti-Semitic. Um, it's hinting at anti. Because yeah. Kanye is straight up said. Yeah, Kanye just fuck yeah. the Jews. Blah blah blah. Jew Jew Jew. Why? Why? Why is he doing that? Who, and Kanye? Kanye. I, I just, well, Kanye's out of his just, mind. I know he's out of his mind, but it's the thing, too, is like why he kept pushing it. Because yeah. he seems to have this idea of, like, I can't believe they're dropping me. But, you know, if your boss is Jewish yeah. and you just go on, you know, on the air and you're like, yeah, I hate Jews. Here's and then the your thing. boss is like, hey, I'm not going to pay you. And we'd be like, what, what the fuck? It's like, well, that's I, your boss. Everyone's like, well, boss well, is the, Jewish. If you go up high true. enough, yeah. everyone's yeah. boss right. is Jewish. Right. So it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> is that true? It's like, I don't even know most people is are Jewish not? unless. Uh, yeah, but here it's like, not. I mean, except... Everyone thinks Jews run the media, but I mean, you know, clearly they don't. Look what happened to Kanye. Well, no, clearly completely they do. I, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you, it's not. Well, I think with Kanye, it was such a slippery. He got away with so much crap for so long. Like, because just, he made a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, this is the one. I didn't know he had so many sponsors. He got dumped by, like, 20 sponsors. Yeah. I didn't realize he was that involved with that many people. I'm I sure. think the problem he's running into is his music has progressively gotten shittier. The cra- It's kind of like the crazier he gets, yeah. the worse his music. So it's like you can't keep acting that way when your music's becoming shitty because he's well, also, very irrelevant i feel like his music's just not, not relevant, relevant. Anymore, well also right? there's like a post kardashian slump that happens to every single man that gets involved even i'm gonna say that even pete davidson who i think i think was the least ran through by the kardashians you know what i mean like i think that they really had like a thing and liked each other and then it was like i think but it's even hurt he, him a little bit that's what i'm saying i, I do you feel like so? i've said yeah. that i've, I've always he said kind of popped off the radar for a while he was like all over the place and dating this one and that one and buying boats well, and whatever he, and he kind of calmed down yeah he um whenever he was dating someone it would end and then immediately he, he was in the, the spotlight with another woman you haven't heard about that you haven't since. no he's been... I, I but look at every the dating history of them or marriage they kind of ruin every every man lamar odom caitlin oh, jenner caitlin jenner was like i can't even be a man anymore <laughs> yeah, <Caitlyn> Jenner's <laughs> like, I'm out. you guys are I'm so out. bad yeah, yeah, yeah. i have to change my sex um <laughs> lamar odom i think od kanye he, he stays ODing. if every only single kanye one. would have just transitioned into a woman he'd be fine right now that's his next move i feel like that's that would be good that's pr the move. yeah he's gonna name himself donda jr <laughs> he would be he would be woman of the year next year can, can, a million percent he get out of this, you think, or you think it's too late for Kanye? I think you can just because I think it, you can get out of anything if you have that if, much influence. If time goes by, I feel like everyone just forgets every. I mean, if you can overturn Roe v. Wade and, and three months later everyone's like, oh yeah, whatever, I think. <laughs> If you make enough money for enough people and you can just shut up for a little while and let everything blow over and you're still a brand, like Kanye's one of the most famous people in the world, then he can, he can be fine, but he's not necessarily going to be fine. Someone's going to pick him up again. For sure. Brand, a brand. <laughs> well, considering 20 of them just dumped him, like... Yeah, but they always... Hear, but brands always, like, knee-jerk, dump somebody who did something, right? Like, it could be anything. People say well, one what's thing... I heard he just signed a deal with Al-Qaeda. Quietly... <laughs> <laughs> They'll a be back. Deal? <laughs> no, he. I just feel like he... Um, I, I had a joke saying like his next album needs to be amazing. Like he needs to go. He needs to go to in be. the studio and make some great fucking. It's kind of like Kobe when he the rape thing. Didn't he win the championship that year? And everyone was like, "All right." <laughs> yeah, it was. I did get like kind of played under the like pushed under the rug that when the whole Kobe situation once he started 
And being killed was a great move for him. <laughs> yeah, PR yeah. Move. That was the ultimate coup. I mean... Well, you know what else scored on points? I will say, I think about Kobe. Every, I thought about Kobe the other day, and I still forget he's, he's dead. It's so weird when thinking that he's not mm. alive anymore. Well, but, he did die doing something awesome, like being a good father, like... Taking his daughter to like uh, all these basketball games in for... the rain in a helicopter though yeah. it's like is that dad of the year? What a horrible! Yeah. Oh, it was <laughs> raining. I'm... Well, it was like bad weather, and he was like, "Let's do it anyway." They're all like, "Let's go." And... Oh, is that what it was? Oh, yeah, it was, it was really they couldn't windy. Couldn't see anything, and they were, they were like, "Well, there's a mountain here, but we're pretty sure we know it's exact location." Oh, really? Yeah, it's I like yeah, it's like weather. a JFK Jr. thing where he was, was like, weird. "Yeah, I can fly the plane." And yeah, like, so it, it was like, like it was like a storm. Not the best dad decision. You could just go, "Hey, sweetie, we're just gonna let's just do it." Like yeah, a couple hours that, and we can see all the mountains. I didn't know the weather. That is such situation. a bummer. Of a st- I mean, like, yeah. I wasn't even a huge Kobe guy, but like, Same, that's I cried. Such- it, it's it's just like it just felt. Even like I said, when I think about him, it's so weird to think. That yeah, he's and dead. if you're the pilot, you don't want to say no because it's Kobe. Yeah, it's like, all right, is he gonna fire me? Like, am I not gonna get his advice? Like, okay, I, I guess. think it's kind of. I think that that's where you run into danger in certain situations like that because that guy, I bet you had. Um, intuition to know it was a bad call, mm-hmm. but you're so intimidated by like that big of a celebrity or something mm-hmm. that you're the, gonna do I, it. I didn't know the weather thing till today. Karen, how'd you know all this? You're I was upset. I looked it up. Ah, the whole It was it was like a wind it was like windy, I think. It was like windy and there was poor visibility. They didn't see the mountain. There was a mountain that had existed for, you know, yeah. it, was of there, years. it was that there the bad day visibility. before. And, <laughs> and they couldn't see it. I think, they was it at night? It was during the the day that is bad uh, you should see him out him during him. the day mm, yeah. it's like honey we'll just be late to your game or whatever it's right like, right you know what i mean it's i'm kobe i'll i'll write write you a slip they're gonna it doesn't uh, matter i'll walk you in myself uh, if you're yeah. famous and it if you're famous and it's windy out and you're about to get in an aircraft just like just stay <laughs> you know it doesn't end well for it people. doesn't richie valens and, <laughs> yeah dude um, that is a power move one. then yeah, R- Richie Valens, that was Buddy Holly. What, what was the other thing. one? There was, was an, there was it another wasn't plane Richie Valens. Richie Valens is the side note. It was Buddy Holly. No, R- he was wh- opening for Buddy Holly, and it was Buddy Holly. No, plane. I mean they made a movie where about yes. Richie Valens dying in it. So yes. it was Richie. It, he's the no, one. He's the main one. No, he wasn't not the main. Buddy Holly. Was I love we're getting an deal. argument. Who was the top? I don't tier. Even know oh, what any of this means. Fucking like, Don McLean. Do you know Richie Valens? Is? Stop it. Don no. McLean uh, do made us. Don McLean made a song the day the music died. And American it's about, Pie. Yeah, it's about Buddy Holly dying. Richie oh. Valens. It's had about one. all of them dying. Yes, it was. He doesn't specify. Richie Valens. He doesn't say this is about Buddy Holly. Richie. Valens had one stupid right. song, La Bamba, and that he had a few da- songs. He was only like, all right, do no, you know the movie La Bamba? Bu- right, we're not. No. It's Buddy. I don't know what's How going on. Are you like twenty? No. Are you in your? You don't have to tell me. I'm but, in my thirties. Okay, so I should know these things. No, stop. It, but it not. was before. The only reason I know it is because they made a movie about it with Blue Diamond Phillips. It's a movie that made. Okay. And so Richie Valens was the singer. He was like seventeen. Oh. And he had La, La, he sang La Bamba. Okay. And that yeah. was his big no, not hit. even his song. He took an old uh, Mexican you really have folk this song. Vendetta, I didn't yeah. know you like hated yeah, Richie you Valens. Check out fucking so Buddy Holly. So Buddy. Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and this guy, the Big Bopper, got on a <laughs> private jet and it yeah. was snowing. Oh, no. why? The surf ballroom. In, so they uh, all three. Cedar so it was like ball. in they one died? shot, three huge musical icons. Yeah, but Buddy Holly was by far. The he he one. won, but they made him. La Bamba made the Richie Valens story He's the more gonna prominent. He's going to push back on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, La Bamba's Buddy just a, you know he stole it from Mexicans. And Buddy <laughs> Holly and the Crickets was the first rock band before that. Um, when they first showed up, they uh, didn't know it was just three guys. They thought they had like a bunch of uh, an entire band behind them, and that that was the first rock group. Where it was only like three: a bass, a guitar, and a drummer. Hmm. And they were like, so. So uh, in that movie, anyways. In, oh yes, all right. We saw the movie. Right, no, no, no I just want to say, but this I got is other a, shit to talk about. Tom. Okay, but I just have twenty more things to say about <laughs> this. No, but in the movie, this is like one of those biopics where it's like in the movie he keeps saying, "I, I don't like to fly." They, they're like, "We have to oh. fly to a concert." He's like, "I don't like to fly," and then. He says at one point, I don't know if it's true, he's like, I always dreamed that I, I always thought I was going to die in a plane crash. And then, like, they're at a concert and they're, it's snowing oh, and no. they're like this little plane and he does a coin toss. Clear Lake, to get Iowa, in. Surf City Ball. But it's like, if you're, you're, if you're terrified of flying and you're like getting in a plane in a snowstorm, why would you, like, why be like, you? yeah, all right, I'll do it now? And also, Waylon Jennings <laughs> is the other music act that didn't get on the plane because it could only fit 
uh, three passengers. So and they did a coin toss yes. between Richie Valens yeah. and the other guy. Oh my god! I know. Isn't that, that crazy? True? That's yeah. crazy. Wow, that really God really decided that guy needed to go. <laughs> Bravo! That sounds like how God works. This conversation needs to that go. That guy this needs to go. Yeah. He's out of here. Dude. I don't like that he stole that La Bamba song. So, um, speaking. By the way, I. All right, I don't want to talk about my fight anymore. Some guy uh, punched me. And my my ears all black oh. and blue. Some dude punched me. You need to drain it because it's gonna get all cauliflowery. Oh really? Yeah, it's not what happens when it that? gets puffy because I like, <laughs> she's been in an abusive relationship she's before. Of, she's, she's like punched a lot. You know my here. dating history, don't you? know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You need to. I, I said a lot of negative stuff about some Jewish guys before. I uh, it comes back to haunt. You're you. gonna get a fucked up ear, bro. I will. Yeah. That's really? how that happens, yes. But it's not swollen. It, yeah, it is. Isn't it? Can I see your other ear for reference? Yeah. It's just black. Will you t- will you it's, turn, it's just no, black. No, but the other ear, I need, no, it is swollen a little bit. I don't saying? know. Listen, use your best judgment, so, I guess. Uh, it just looks a little red to me. It, oh, you're, okay. you're right. It is a little swollen. Yeah. Well, yeah. well it's going to cripple your ear for life. So I don't know if you care about that aesthetics. Do you think so? What should, so you're saying I should I go to the I think you should go to a city MD and have them like drain it. Oh, really? Yeah. You like, don't, you know, maybe fighters, I'll do that. Why not? It's a medical yeah. condition. But anyways, I could have had the guy arrested. And but so here, what happened? Why did he really... punch you? Were you being annoying? No, no, <laughs> I didn't even know. What did you say? First of all, they thought <laughs> I started. I, I tackled the guy afterwards, and I could have punched him, and I didn't. Okay. Um, I was, was doing it a show. Balance, his son. Yeah, I was doing a show in Pittsburgh. After the show, I went over to watch the World Series. Okay. And this is at a uh, Pernini Brothers, and uh, some guy just. That I, I talked to him a little bit, him and the people he was with a little bit. No, no, no big deal, nothing, just watching the World Series. Yeah. And then, like, a few minutes later, uh, I get punched. Like, I, I just, someone, like, he didn't, like, he punched my ears. Like, someone just punched my oh, why? Punched my ear. I'm like, what's going on? The dude's, like, squaring up, and I tackled him. And then the security came, and they like, all right, you got to go. And I'm like, I'm like, this dude just, like, and the two women he was with said, this guy tried to beat up my boyfriend, talking about me. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know. And then other people are like, no, this guy just swung and tried to take this dude's head, head off. But talking why? About me. Was there any tension? No, no. He th- it turns out he thought I was someone else. <laughs> it turns out I was you someone else. You just have else. a punchable face <laughs> but, that also is on another man. But they watch it on <laughs> surveillance, and they're like, I could press charges on this dude. You, but, have, a, you have an ear that looks very similar yeah. to another guy. But here's what pissed me off. <laughs> I, you know, my ear looks very similar. I know to that ear. I know that ear anyway. <laughs> and, uh, but they watch on surveillance and they're like, oh, you can press charges on this guy, which I, I, I didn't. But at first, but here's what upset me. I could have punched him. I had every right to punch him and I wussed it out. I tackled him, and I could have punched him. Well, let me ask this. Do you actually have the right to punch someone if they've punched you first? Yes. Yeah. You have the right? Like, the legal right? I'm a lawyer, and <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Is yeah. that true? Yeah. Both, both statements are true. Oh, I didn't know that. It's, um, if That's someone cool. starts a, a, a physical altercation and you feel threatened physically, you You're can allowed defend to yourself. Back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought to you were supposed to just be like, not punching, not punching. No, to a certain extent. You can't, like, he, you couldn't pick up, like, a steel bar and start being Oh, it has to be, like, like reciprocal force It would, have to, be, it, yeah, it would have to be enough that you're basically trying to stop the Got attack. It. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I tackled the guy, and, like, I could have punched, but... I wussy it out. Actually, but Why but I mean, is wussy that wussying out? out? I mean, like, I feel like that's probably a better move. You tackle that person's him. an unhinged person right. who punched you for no reason. So you probably don't want to escalate the situation. Yeah, but I mean, I could have punched someone. That's a crazy someone. person. I feel. I love how you're upset that you like. I could have punched well, him. Well, well, no. Here's what upset me because other people that were there afterwards was like, dude, you could sh- you should have like beat the shit out of him. Like if that was me, I would. And then it made right. me feel like Everybody less. Everybody says that. I know. Every, me... If I, it was me, Everyone I would have. Yeah. 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 And it's, right. they never would have. Everyone's like, I would have rescued all the Jews. Yeah. Now you want if it. I was around, I would have killed Hitler. You would have pretended nothing was happening, like just everybody like else. Na- like everyone's doing now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, um, I don't know. It made me feel bad about myself. Like, why Aww. didn't I? Why didn't I punch? Well, that because guy? you I, felt every... bad because people saying that. So you're like, oh, I'm a wuss because now they're they're like they were. That's indirectly them saying you're a wuss. But why? Like, why should you like be a? You, I mean, if you had done that, you might have been able to get arrested because you'd have to prove 
that you felt threatened still in that situation. He probably did the right thing by not escalating well, did, with a crazy person. He yeah. did get up with like ready to go. And yeah, then but you tackled him, right? Yeah, I just. So that's all right. How was that not? Yeah, so you did something. But I, I you just start crying. You cry and run away like yeah. when the bug attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> if that had been me, <laughs> I would have well, yeah. run away really quick. Well, here's the thing. Was there a girl around that you wanted to impress? No. Then who I, cares? I was just watching right, the game by myself. Fine. Yeah, then it doesn't matter. If there was a woman there, I'd be like, you should have punched that guy. You know, you probably would have got your dick sucked but beautiful but yeah no you're fine who cares yeah. if a girl didn't see it happen did it really happen i, I yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like it it all revolves around women doesn't it though but women blowing you so yeah. ah, well you did the right or thing if there, was, if there were no women around to blow you then you shouldn't have done then anything whatever you did the right thing but yeah, i in know? a weird way i feel like the world does kind of revolve around that it's not weird that is how the world works so you think I should get this ear checked out? Yeah, I, I would because <laughs> I, I care winded. about the aesthetics of my ears. Look, I've got them all pierced pretty and yeah. everything, but that's just me. Do you, yeah, I, I think I it's would definitely be fun. Go I would go to, to the a doctor. doctor. Does it hurt? It looks painful. It Maybe hurt. they'd give you painkillers. It hurts so That'd be yeah. nice, yeah. It hurts a little bit. Well, so you know what? I'll, I'll go to an urgent care tomorrow. Cause I'm, yeah, I can go it won't take long. Yeah, you can pop in there today. It'll take you five minutes. You'll, they probably yeah. will give you painkillers. I'm glad I brought yeah, this up. Call me when I you like get how, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be, we'll be right here in this studio. <laughs> we'll still go with you. Yeah, we're going to be eating beef jerky in the yeah, green yeah. room. I, I like that uh, this is how I get my health care. Like, there's literally no one in my, like, I, my parents are dead. My oh. my oh. sister's got their own family, so I don't really. You bring this up on every podcast. I, know. I feel on. like I have heard this a lot. <laughs> I so, have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so my family my... doesn't care about me if I live or die. So yeah, yeah. just so, me and my swollen ear. <laughs> so like I bring it up to like other people. So I'm glad. To, to, like this is the reason why let's my go back podcast. to something a little more uplifting. Kanye, yeah. hating Jewish people. Yeah, let's talk about the plight of the yeah. Jews to and just Kobe Bryant lift dying. the mood. Yeah. So how would you handle it, Tom? If someone came up to you and took a a swing at your head. You heard his bug story. <laughs> Not well. <laughs> well, if there's a bug around, I would definitely be out of there. <laughs> that would be my excuse. Like, yeah, I was going to beat the shit up, but then I saw a roach on him. Um... You know, I'm I'm not tough, but I I if I'm in a situation, I'm I'm good at acting tough, like like putting on a right, front right. that I can like hold my and I do feel like I've gotten in situations where if you just kind of like show that you like can hold your own, that's that's a big th I think that's I grew up here, so I think that was a big New York thing I learned early on. You just have to like when I could feel something dangerous around if if I carried myself in a way that mm. looked. But I will say there have been like three or four times in my life where I've been pushed so hard. Like, I don't like to fight, but I where I've been pushed and, like, I've gotten so mad where I'm, like, I might lose this fight and get the shit beat right, out of me, right. but I am so mad I'm I'm doing something. So, and the, every time I've done that, the other person has been, like, okay. Like, because they, they can see that. Because yeah. I, I have had it, like, four times in my life where, one time on stage where the, this guy was hacking me, and I, and I was, and I said, I go, I'm going to go fight you right now. And the crowd was like, ah. And I was like, I'm not kidding. I'm going to fight this guy. And what did he say? For me to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, there's a bug on you. No. Um, <laughs> no. Um, early season. It was a long, it was him and it, it was a shitty open mic. It was really early on. They they were talking and like, it was, it was so bad, the mm -hmm. open mic. And, they were talking is really rude and I was kind of trying to be like, hey, what, you know, why are you guys, can you please stop talking? And then the girl goes, um, I feel sorry for you. And that like really was like, and then I go, oh, oh so why? Really and then okay. she goes, cause you're not funny. And then I was like, oh, but why am I, why do you think that? And then they just went back to talking and the guy was like, said something like, I just, you know, like, like you suck. Way, that, that, or you, first of all, when, when someone yells, says to you, you're not funny, mm -hmm. that is a, a, a gut punch it is on stage yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a rough thing to come back from well yeah. first of all you can't take it too if someone's not paying attention then who cares you get what i'm saying like i've been in situations if someone's not paying attention um like a, a half-ass bar comedy show and someone's like oh you're not but they're not paying attention that doesn't bug me because it's like this is i get mad at myself <laughs> like why am i here doing this. In well, front of, I uh, think I think it was a combination of, of I'd had a bad like couple of weeks and I was really and I, <laughs> and um like bad shows and it, it wasn't just a one time they were they were being very blatantly and it had been going on it went back and forth for like four minutes and they just kept talking and then ignoring me and then they would just yell an insult like almost like shooing a right, fly right. away like mm -hmm. yeah you like basically you suck and then they and then I tried to engage him after he said that. 
And then I realized there were only like five people in the room. It was a shitty open mic. And I'm like, that guy is about 20 feet away from me. We're just in a bar. He's openly just yelling insults right. at me. What is stopping? If I was just in a bar yeah. and he was doing that, right. I would go and confront him. So I was like, fuck it. I mean, you know, because I was so pissed that right. he was ignoring me. And I was like, Hey, dude, like you're going to ignore me. Guess what? You're bad. And I, you know, like I said, I'm not a tough guy, but like I was so fucking mad. Like I was I was walking over. And the greatest part about it is everyone started grabbing me to hold me back. Ah, you know, the whole like hold yeah. me back. They really were holding me back, though. And um, and I got near the guy. and He just had his he was sitting down He and he wouldn't look at me. He was like, well, I'm sorry. I just don't think you're funny. Oh, like he's he trying to impress this girl. Wow. But he really was pussing out. Like, he was not mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm. up, being like, oh, yeah, what's up, dude? He was just like, I'm sorry. No, I'm just, saying uh, it was like, it was safe when you were on stage, that's right? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he could just yell shit, and we are right, right? And but she's like, yeah. I think that's what dawned on me. Well, I was like, wow, this guy's really going out his way to insult me. And I'm like, what is, there's no, like, right, barrier right. here. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Me tackling that guy was just my adrenaline. But then after I did it, and, like, I could think, like, I I, I didn't have the balls to punch him. I like seriously didn't have the balls to punch him. But you I, didn't. I, I feel like you got past the point of having to punch. Punching someone in is is something that you do because you have to do it, right? You're like, I got. I, have I have to defend myself. Someone? No. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it, it <laughs> oh my god, or slap someone? No. Um. Okay. Not not like that. Not like in anger. Okay. Um. No, I don't think I've ever gotten into a physical altercation ever. Well, somebody punched me once. Really? really? Yeah, a stranger on the street in Philly. It was like a kid. It was like a day or something. A kid. <laughs> it was. It was like a teenager. Boy, and he punched girl? me. Yeah, boy. Punched you where? Wow. I was, what's that? In the face? No, it was in the, here's the thing. It wasn't in the face. It wasn't in the head. He didn't really hurt me. And he could have, because I didn't see it coming at all. So if he wanted to hurt me, he actually could have. That's could've. why, like, this dude was obviously wasted. He had an easy shot at my face. Well, this kid. And this... I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't Next know what was going I know, on. I just got. Well, it was, it was last Thanksgiving, and I was walking to Helium with my sister. It was, like, a few blocks. But Philly is, like, it's not like here. Like, if there's nobody on the street here, but it's, like, a decent hour, you're, like, whatever. Nothing's right. going to happen. But in Philly, if there's nobody on the street, and it's, like, twilight, like, it's not safe. Nah. It's just not safe. So I didn't know that. We're walking to Cleveland, her. certain areas. It's me and her and her boyfriend. So I, like, I don't know. And um, these, this car, like, rolls up. Kind of stops, but not fully. I, I've never seen anyone get out of a moving car. They like pushed someone out of it. This teenager comes what kind like of gang falling is this? out. Like, we <laughs> dare you to punch a girl. It was, wait, I could hear girls in the car. It was like a group of friends or something. I could hear them like giggling. And so, but I didn't know what was going on. I don't know. I'm not right. like, when do I spend time around teenagers? So this kid like tumbles out of a car and I go, oh my God, are you okay? Like, I'm the adult, right? right so I'm right. like, is everything okay? And he just, he's like, comes out and he just starts like walking. I was just like, oh, how right, big was he? He was just like a tall, lanky teenager. Kind and he wasn't like a huge dude so he goes all the way he does this like weird thing which walks around us in this weird way I was like whatever I feel he's weird and then kind of loops around and I was wearing a puffy coat because it was cold and then I just felt like this I felt a punch someone punched me like, like right in hard the or not Hard enough to be a punch, right, but not right. hard. Listen, there was no, I was, my sister was like, I, was, I didn't, so I didn't see it. It was probably like weird to see someone get punched. I just felt it. Right. And for me, I just felt like a hard thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like someone yeah. whacking me. So it took me a sec. I was like, what the, f like, I go, did I just get stabbed? Like I had to run right, through, I had to right, do the yeah, mental yeah. checklist. And then I realized I was like, oh, I'm okay. You know, if he'd punched me in the head, the night would have been like over. Right. Yeah. Like I would have been really upset and I would have, but my sister was like, we should call the police. I go, no, we were on our way. We're going to hang out with big J in like the green room. And he was doing like a weekend and I was like I'm not like getting the police and the kid ran off like I didn't even I couldn't have identified him didn't see the license plate number like should have fucking just gone. tackled him like a man he was just gone you should just tackle him we didn't know what there. <laughs> if that had been me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have tackled him <laughs> we just like walloped me with like a long lanky arm and then just took off running by the time I turned around he was gone I couldn't even see him so I'm like, see, so I'm gonna chase down an athletic teenager, really, right, right. in my like cute boots well, and like. Hopefully, my... he was yeah. murdered in a gang shooting. <laughs> <laughs> right after. That. I mean, it's Philly, so the likelihood is high. Uh, but yeah, it's the only time I've ever been struck. I'm like a veal. No I, I have me. like confronted like teenagers on the street who are being. They're scary. I would never I confront know. a teenager. I, it's weird. I went through a phase for about four months where I was like getting into alter like because <laughs> like one time I was walking down the street and like. 
these kids, these teenagers, you know, they weren't, you know, teenagers are scary. Like they're, they're you know, terrifying. Yeah, they're really scared. They're not small. They're and they're strong nuts. and they're and they have no sense of consequences right. and yeah. they're crazy. So yeah. they were doing that thing where like it was crowded on the street and they were just having a full on snowball fight in the street. You know, basically and everyone's just kind of ignoring it. With like it. the strength right. of an adult, yeah. Well, you know, and they're doing it to they're they're antag they're kind of daring people to react. And right. so one of them hit me with this and it barely hit me and they were like not small and i go who the fuck and i go who the fuck did that and there yeah. was like five of them yeah and and uh and they were like i didn't one of them was like i didn't do it and i go what what the fuck are you doing and i'm like in this kid's face and he's like well, sorry i didn't do it and i'm like and in the middle i'm like what am i doing and there's like five <laughs> yeah. teenagers yeah, yeah. here no they're ter they're they go in they rove around in in packs you can't like but i would have just said have a nice day but the thing is that it was i was because I had that energy, they were kind of like, this guy means business or mm. something. So I went through a weird phase where I I think it made me feel, I think I was having a bad like winter. Oh, okay. Because that bug thing really got to you. You're like, I got to like do something. <laughs> no, no. That was me getting back to my normal stuff. <laughs> that, that I'm running that was, that was the now baseline. I'm, that's oh, okay. when I knew I was back and I was running away from bugs. <laughs> The funniest part about that story is now I just left my girlfriend there to like. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> well, I mean, look, she was like, well, she didn't really care, but I was like, well, what do you want me to do? There's a bug there. Just every like walk away every from the man bug. For himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I thought you were talking about the snowball situation. That oh same no, girl no, was that there. was just me, and that that was me more wanting a, like a confrontation because it barely. I, I, what it is is when I see people doing things like that right, right. in public where they're clearly trying to antagonize people and it's clearly like like a blatant disrespect i get that gets me really mad and i when i'm in situations where i see right. bullies i i really bullies really bring it out of me yeah. i don't like it i talked so. about this on a pa uh, po uh, past podcast where a dude an old guy threw a beer at me um, a pint of beer. And oh my God. <laughs> Too bad you didn't you get it. You gotta stop hanging video. around these old, yeah. old guys at bars. Um, was no, it, I, I was were you on, on stage. Yeah, I was on stage. Oh, if you got oh, it on video, fuck. you would be yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you'd be on, I, 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 on Kimmel. Exactly. <laughs> but like the dude, I just started making fun of him, and uh, and it, it was great. And but the owner and the guy that's whose comedy show it was just like want me to get off. So I started roasting them from stage, and it was. But I was not scared of the old the old dude that threw he's like three feet in front of me and missed me by like five feet i was just covered in beer and i was just like going off on him like i wasn't at no point was i afraid of him and he had a whole table full of more glasses to throw at me if he wanted to <laughs> yeah um, they didn't even cut him off at that point <laughs> like sir yeah. here's another beer on the house <laughs> yeah. that's what sucked because they were such like it's it's like one of the they're like a bunch of new comics um that it's all like the Comedian on stage, no one's getting paid. Like, I got mad at myself, like, why am I doing this show? But like, the comedian in the room is like the least important person. Yeah. So it's like one of those shows. Mm. Yeah. So like, <laughs> they could have, they ended up comping that dude's whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, and the whole time, like, I'm, I'm like making fun of the dude. It, it, it all started because his uh, daughter wouldn't shut up. They're in the front row. I finally got the whole room paying attention. She said a few things like, shut the fuck up at the beginning of the set, but no one's paying attention. Then when I got the whole room paying attention, and she told me to sh shut the fuck up. I'm talking to my dad. I go, I get it. He didn't hug you 30 years ago. That's why you blew every member of Van Halen in 1997. <laughs> and then the whole crowd's laughing. Then they immediately quit laughing. And what is specific insult? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's great. You had a year. I fucking, you, know, you had an exact year of I her fucking doing it? Yeah, and then they just started roasting the table and roasting the guy who's in charge of the comedy show. He's this old guy, open micer, wears his pants up to his nipples. He's like, you're never doing the grindstone again. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, listen, I'm getting yelled at a dude to mom jeans. I started calling him mom jeans, making fun I, of his jeans. I love how you made nipples. it even worse because you picked yeah. a year when Van Halen wasn't really relevant yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. So it's like blowing them uh, then was just dude, like. Dude, if I had that on video, that video would have been so viral. But I was like fucking cr just doing I think that's how people get uh, yeah. like. TV spots now is by yeah. getting assaulted on video. Oh, that's I the just, best thing could possibly happen to you. I roasted that. Anyone that was a dick to me, I just I roasted now. that entire table. I roasted the owner, the guy that was in charge of the comedy show, and it was like, 
Yeah, and they're like, get off set. I'm like, I'm not getting off set. Have you ever I'm like, gotten, this is this turned ever, into like the best set of my life. Have you I'm ever like, gotten I mean, either of you? I was like, what are you gonna do? Probably not, not you. I was but. like, what are you gonna do? Not pay me twice? Like, I'm not getting paid for being here. You're gonna yeah. you're, you don't get to come back and do free comedy shows anymore. It's you don't get to do right. that here at the grindstone. I'm like, go fuck yourself. I yeah. fucking don't oh, need to be here. Grindstone. No, yeah. but have you ever gotten into physical grindstone? grindstone in, Grindstone in Brio, Ohio. Go fuck. I'm that actually place. headlining the Grindstone. Go, it week. doesn't. You're not getting paid. They don't pay anything. I'm, I know. I'm not going there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, have you ever almost gotten a physical altercation on stage besides that? For sure not. Have, for me, yeah. no, 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 no. In I mean, I, again, I wasn't I, scared. It's a less. I don't think it happens to women as much because I feel like dudes in the audience get really if you they get feel insulted and threatened and if you're a dude then they yeah, right. even though that girl the one we were, who got on Kimmel Ariel she, he didn't he throw beer at her threw beer at her that's cr- I mean to at a woman I mean that's yeah insane. but that's that here's the thing if it'd been a guy getting a beer thrown at him I don't know that would have gone as viral I don't because think it's it really unusual that, for a girl to get attacked right yeah. on stage that's usually people are like well I'll just let her finish whatever right. I'll let her do her little girly thing. But no, I, I, I seriously just like, once I, I didn't feel threatened, and then I'm like, okay, now I got the entire room's uh, attention. Because I'm the only person that's been doing comedy more than like three months on that show. Yeah. So like, I got the whole room paying attention. They were they were loving it. And then I just started roasting the guy who could have told them to shut up at any point and didn't. I started making fun of him, and I started making fun Yeah, the whole place. I just started fucking making fun of the whole place and- that's good because yeah. I, I I've and you gotten... never worked there again. Yeah, again, I didn't get paid. It wasn't like I was working. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't do this at an actual comedy. You got club. fired from your internship. Yeah, yeah. 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 Your volunteer. <laughs> but it was just hilarious. A guy comes up and he goes, "You'll never do the." Gr-. It's like, what? You're gonna not pay me twice? What are you talking about? Like mm. this is this isn't a com- yeah. Anytime where there's a comedy show where the comedian on stage is the least important thing happening, screw that. Don't that's it- um that's actually you know, that reminds you of the time I got off stage to confront the guy. That was enough. Other thing that happened when it was happening the guy insulted me and I said stuff back the host I saw go over and start apologizing to them yeah to them before yeah wow. like so that was another just yeah. kind of like like jab like I was like this guy came here they're heckling yeah. me now the host is apologizing and I'm and then the guy later was like mad at me the host and I was like look your show was out of control that, that you should I do hate it when the show's not controlled and they just yeah. let them go nut. A lot of shows, it feels like they're not on the comic well, side. You know what? It's very like, you should just be able to handle it. Well, it's that's like- what ruins comedy, too, is like Cleveland doesn't have much of a comedy scene. And that's because a lot of the, like, the local shows are that, where it's just like open micers that don't get to go on stage a lot. And they just uh, get, talk to a bar like, all right, we're going to do comedy. But then no, no one pleases the room. The customers are more important than the person on stage. The bar staff's more. Everyone's more important. The game on TV is more important than the person on stage. And it just sets up for. So people in Cleveland see that and they, they think that's comedy. So now they don't want to go to any comedy show. So, yeah, we went to one comedy show and it was this horse crap. And so the, it, it kills comedy in a scene like that, um, is all I'm saying. But yeah. It's so good comedy. Yeah. It's speaking of it's really um, fun. I, w- I do want to get back to the lower. We're going to wrap up here like in in ten minutes. But the uh, I want to get back to Rafifi. Uh huh. My first Rafifi thing. I did a. Uh, Dan Allen was like he he did premium blend and stuff. Yeah, and, and that was, was Rafifi was like this is kind of the center of the alt scene at, at yeah. that time. And they had like CDs. I knew who Tom was from. Uh, he was on the Rafifi. The advice the mob CD. Yeah, and so I I knew of this show in New York City. And Dan Allen was in there, and I did a sketch, and he's like, oh, instead of doing a spot, I'm going to play your sketch. And I was all excited. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. It's a laundromat sketch. It's still online. And uh, the uh, the whole video, I'll, I'll give you a quick synopsis. So I'm at the laundromat getting my stuff out, and some good-looking girl walks in. I'm like, hey, what? she starts talking to me. I'm like, oh, hey. And I pretend like I just got there, so I start rewashing my stuff. And then just then Dan comes in, who plays her boyfriend. It's like, hey, what's going on? After I already hit start, they start making out. So I got to sit there and watch them make out while my laundry, like, redoes it. And there's things that happen. Then I take my laundry out, and then Esther Koo's in it. She's the other chick. And she goes, hey, what's going on, cutie? So I take a cup of coffee, pour it over my things, and go back and wash my... Yeah. Dust. So it's, it's a dumb sketch. It's funny, but it's whatever. So Dan's like, oh, I'm going to play. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this sketch. Uh, and I was like all excited. I'm like, oh, there's Eugene Merman. Uh, I know who he is. And uh, there's Mike Birbiglia. I'm like, oh, this is my big coming out party. They're gonna play. 
that sketch did nothing. <laughs> really? No Bombed. one laughed once. <laughs> they stormed the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah you like, had to punch made, everybody. They were like, who made this? Oh, uh, no, it's the exact opposite. Because you, that room, when it's silent, is no, I know, silent. I know. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone was having a great time. And then that, and that Bobby Tisdale guy didn't even talk to me. <laughs> like, I'm like... I was, I was like, oh, I, it was so humiliating. Just sitting there watching my thing. Just fucking it's really hard too when you shit. like if you show something you like shot at a show. There's nothing if you it's can going, do. but yeah, you can't change the trajectory. It's yeah, just it's right. over. If it's bombing, you're just like, you're stuck oh, there. this is gonna continue to bomb. And it's just an eternity for you. Yeah, it's I'm rough. like, I'm gonna be friends with this guy now, and I'm gonna be good friends with the and Sorry, this is gonna be awesome. Yeah. New York City, I made it. My we're videos like, getting get played at Rafifi. Like, Don't ever come back <laughs> yeah it was kind of like a it's snotty i think what you know what stunk. happened is it was like the only place you know i got in like early in it and they liked me and i think they liked me because i was very like 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 my style was sort of casual and loose and i talked about kind of random stupid things so they liked that and then what happened it was you know that thing that happens where like then you're in it early and then the mm. thing grows around you and you're mm-hmm. like and everyone's like how do i get in there and i'm like i don't know mm-hmm. i just kind of was here at the beginning so um and then you know it, it. That's kind of what the book is about. That scene kind of got really big, and then Rafifi closed, and it kind of then the alt scene kind of started to dissipate and disappear. So it was kind that's of like it, yeah. an era that sort of ended. Yeah, it had like a, a, yeah, but it produced so many people. That's I know. So like so many people in that eight year span were not famous and then they were hugely famous it was like kumail like like uh, kumail showed up and then it was like tj miller pete holmes amy schumer was around um what aziz Mm -hmm. it was just like insane it was that's why i was like i i feel like someone should write a book about because it's it's about a certain era in comedy that was unique and did launch the next generation of comedy. So did you, like, is this just from your personal experience or did you do any research for it or anything? It's just, I. It, it's kind of, I would say it's like an autobiographical novel. So mm-hmm. it's based all on my experiences, but it's not, you know, some of it's changed. I mean, everything that's in it did, ha- like, I didn't make up interactions, but, like, the interactions aren't exactly, yeah. you know, what we said to each other, you know, because, like, who can remember? You know, I was drunk most of the time. And yeah, who can, but, right, right. Uh, but, it's I changed my name in it, so it's more like you, I don't know if you read like Charles Bukowski at all, but Bukowski. I need to read more books. But he would like write one on stories how to fight. I need were, to learn how to fight. Well, you have a lot of stories. It sounds like, but like he would write books that were based on him, but he would do it in another name, so he could kind of get away with not making it completely accurate. But I, at the beginning, I said this is all based on. But you right. kept everybody else's name. I change some names. Oh, okay. When anyone I say something <laughs> kind of bad about, I don't use That's their name. That's not their real name, yeah. Everyone, do... everyone I say good things about, I say their name. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. But can you kind of figure it out pretty easily? Um, I probably. And I, but I thought that might be the cool, a cool part about it <laughs> mm. is a comedy fan might be like, well, who is this? Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Yes. What what's it like so starting out the, for you, Karen? Uh-huh. What was it like starting out? Yeah. Um, well, when did you start doing it was comedy? Weird. Yeah. So I don't remember the exact. I know people remember their like exact thing. I've been doing comedy for like eight or so years, and when I started, it was in like the tail end of my relationship with Kurt, who I'd been with for a really long time. So I was like, so it was like kind of rough because. And to be How fair, well, where did you start together? out? At? We were dating for we dated for ten years. Yeah, wow. but where did you start out? Like what? New York. What room? Okay. Oh yeah, what open mic. I don't know, like open mic, like New York. Stuff? Open, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Did dating him make you like kind of open you up to that? Where you were like, oh, this it is. did. And like dating him, also just like being around. Like the, I started dating him because I, I ended up around comics in the first place, right? So I was like, you know, and then of course I knew him super well, and I was like, oh, but I, um, but I was already around like these comics who were not my peers at all. Like it was not. Like my like, I wasn't around open micers. I was around like Big J and Kurt right. And stuff you were because like you were so, at the cellar all the time. Yeah. So and that's who I was comfortable with. So that actually kind of counts against you when you're starting out because yeah. I was not comfortable with people who were my same level of comedy, which was open mic right. level, and they didn't I care wasn't for either, me. I didn't know anyone. That's I didn't right. know anybody. And also they were like, "Who the fuck are you?" Like because I was Kurt's girlfriend. So and to be fair, when a comic's girlfriend starts doing comedy now, I'm like. All right. You know, like I I get the eye roll, right? Where it's like, I know why you think you can do this because you hang out with him and he laughs at your shit. And now you think that you're really. Did he? 
laugh but, at my stuff. Was he like supportive? He was what? super supportive. Oh, yeah, he was. He, yeah, because yeah, I feel like a lot like, of dudes would be like, "Ah, you shouldn't do it." No, he was like, you, he was like, "Do it, go for it." He goes, "I think you're really funny," and like, you know, of course. And Kurt's like one of the greats, and so when we would hang out, just you know, bullshit. What we were dating, we would just like hang out and do nothing, and you know, we were laughing together. Always felt I was like, I'm making Kurt Besker laugh. Like there was an element of that because I did look up to him, and he's older than me, and we're not we're not peers, right? So it was like I was like, oh my god, maybe I can, but. Because I had been around comics who were like these great comics who were also my friends, and I was dating this great comic who related to me as like an equal, I didn't quite realize how much everybody starts at the bottom at comedy, right? Yeah. And how much you truly suck at the beginning. And it hurt my feelings. You can't, <laughs> it's like the only thing you can't, you can't, even if you have connections, you, you can't, can't skip that part. Yeah, no. you can't. I actually remember around the time when I started in New York. Neil Brennan started doing stand up and he had already had this big career as a screenwriter. Right. And he was doing Chappelle show, working on Chappelle show, but he knew he he hadn't he he wasn't a stand up yet. No, so he had to and start this with was us. the time when and because I was around all those guys, like the whole thing was you had to be really funny, right? So it's not like the same as now where it's like you do a little crowd work, you put on TikTok or whatever. It was like you the whole thing was like I have to write these great jokes and I'm not good at you're always like I'm not good, I'm not good enough, I stink, this stinks. So I came up around that kind of yeah. attitude, right? Where I was always like, Well, oh, I would um, you're beat not my lack of punch lines by doing crocodile hunter impression wearing wigs on my pants like i did i just had to stink for a like, while i didn't even i didn't even know i was yeah hacking. it is and people weird didn't like me and they yeah. were like who the fuck is this bitch and also i was we weren't friends and they were really clicky and it's funny because now when i like you know now there's people that i used to deal with mics with back in the day like we're friends now you know because all this time has gone by and they're cool people did you actually. have comedy beefs no, I didn't have comedy uh, beefs. I just didn't have comedy friends that uh, were my like age in comedy. And you have to. like you have yeah. to. It goes both ways, too, because when you have this group of friends, you do everything together, you're also kind of gassing each other up so you think you're better than you are, you know? Because you go, you're like laughing at each other's shit at open yeah. mics. It's not a true test. It's but... funny how you're all really like, um, you have a lot, you're all very like excited about it early on. Right. Because you're all new and you haven't been like, you haven't uh, had your energy beaten out of you. Beaten, <laughs> beaten out down. of you. Yeah. You're so like, I had to yeah, get this is great. Beat out of me yeah. yeah so for years and then and yeah and then like stuff just evolves like time just goes by you get better you do different shit everybody does their own thing and then there was you know the pandemic like changed everything and now i feel like the scene's different it's like almost like you know i don't know like i feel close to people by just familiarity right i'm like i've known you guys for so long do you think comedy is at all in a way like a cult in in it ways is for sure for sure because comedy demands so much of you and promises you so little and also look really discourages comedy is like the institution of comedy like i'm not talking about corporate or anything i'm talking about like the scene discourages you from doing anything but comedy and yeah. yet Put and yet, just dedicating your life to doing stand up is crazy. Like, I've had, I remember it when in my times doing comedy, like, because I've done it for a while, but like, I had pieces here and there when I was branching out and doing other things. And like, like when I was doing, like, when I was like doing my rap, he was thing. a rapper for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, I, I brought yeah. him up terribly yesterday. I go, We did a it was an Adam TV video. Uh, a rap song. We did a rap yeah. song together. Well, it was just funny because it was like, people were like, you guys did rap together? Yeah. What? You're like the whitest yeah, yeah, dudes. Yeah, yeah. That I, but um, I did it kind of as like, I saw people doing it at the time. And I was like, and I'm really into rap. And I was mm -hmm. a good rapper. And I was like, I want to do that. And then it became like, I could tell people were like, what are you doing? And I was like, what I'm just kind of like doing that, yeah, like but on I the think side. People who do stuff on the side that also I you is were compatible. Good, man. I was good, yeah. but it also oh, is compatible with comedy. Like it's creative, it's performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that people who do that have a lot of balls. Like yeah. I know, like you know, people do random shit too. Like you know, what's her name did motorcycles for a while, and that was hot, and like you know, made her look good, and Who's like. This? Um, um, well, he, I'll, I'll, I will no, say the this. motorcycle girl, and then right. and then, but you can like do like Sarah Armour does her astrology thing, and she's really good at that and into it. And she's like, fuck it, I'm doing I this also too. think now got, you've got balls. Well, to do where that. I, well, the, when I did it, it was just kind of like also, it was still when the alt scene was kind of around, so you could kind of do a little, you could, I mean, it wasn't that big, but I could tell some people were kind of like. Why are you doing that? And it was a thing that kind of started as like a joke and just kind of kept going. You did a whole album, two albums. Well, right? someone I did. Two, I did <laughs> well, two people, well, I did a video, and then yeah. someone was like, "Hey, do you want me? Do you, do you want to make an album? I'll pay for it." I was like, "All right." Yeah. So I mean, I'm not gonna. Why not? But I feel like now it, there's so many. 
like different cross sections of comedy. Like it's just everything's so fractured that you you can do a bunch. I feel like you almost have to do a bunch but of I different think that things. You, I think that it's prudent to do. I no, think it's a good yeah, idea totally. to follow yeah, yeah. your actual interests. I will and say this. By the way, we're human beings. Not every single thing, even if you're a comic and you're a professional comic, is all you do. Not everything I'm gonna is sum comedy. Up what, you don't have any I know, other interests. I'm going to sum up what you're saying with this. Like, yes, I'm into baseball <laughs> cards and I did like baseball card videos with a comedic take. Like I got hired to like do openings, opening baseball cards and stuff. Like mm-hmm. so no matter what you are, you can add comedy to whatever you're interested in. So if it is skateboarding, you can add comedy to skateboarding. You can do comedy commentary with whatever I need to take it further if, and say you should do that. Yeah. If yeah, you have fun. other interests and you can do it and like be, you know, use your comedy, whatever, because you're funny and you're, you're, yeah, you're charismatic, yeah. you should do it. Because if you're you're pigeonholing yourself just being like, I'm just gonna do So what are your interests? But you're right. I do think it's stand up allowed to look at I think stand ups are very like this is the pure comedy. Like you're not no, doing it up. Shut up. There's no such thing as a comedy police anymore. Stop it. We're our no, own bosses. What are you talking about? But it's a vibe. Yeah. It's comedy as no, a... No, I, I, I experienced yeah. it. Yeah. People we start have... being weird to me. Even if you have like I a... apologize for those emails, Tom. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> even if you have a job because you, you, well, no, you need I, to I, pay I gotta... your bills. You know, people be like, oh, I, I had I, a I, no, I'm a lawyer now. When I start, when I was a lawyer, you know, when I went to law school, people were like, that was like, that was when people are like, what are you doing? I'm the comedy lawyer now. That's what I do. No, and I was like, why? Because I have a job. I was like, Kim Kardashian's going to law school. To I can. That's what I'm saying. You're not <laughs> allowed to have a job. Well, people saying. like, I, I'm, I'm Sorry. counting change and da da da. It's like, that's great for you, but some of us like to, you know, buy a moisturizer once in a while. Like, I don't want to count. I don't want to sit I'd there. I'd like eating, to have like, a house. Uh, you no, know? but when you know, but that was the thing. People were like, how could you? you Who know, are these it was, people? <laughs> people. You've were, never people experienced were weird. that. People were weird. I don't give a shit. But then I would. That's what I. That's not the point. We got to wrap this up. But I was just. My point is like, you know. Then when I was in law school, Kim Kardashian was like, "I'm, I'm going to go to law school." Kim Kardashian heckled I was just Kim like, Kardashian's like, no, "Tom, you can't go to law school." But I'm going so, to law school. But I was like, so if Kim Kardashian, who's this billionaire, is deciding to go to law school kind of on a whim, like, why can't I do that? You can do like, whatever And I really need to do that because yeah. she doesn't need to do that. Right. Like, I need to, and I did always want to do that. So. It was. It was kind. Of, I had started the process when I got out of college, and yeah. I was like, I don't need this. You just can't let comedy tell you to not do things other than comedy because comedy oh. also doesn't promise you that that's going to deliver. Of so course, you can go, right. okay, we, we, we got to wrap comedy. up because we're over. I just saw the time. We're over an hour. Okay, okay. so we got to. All right, Jesus. All right. Yes, you can do whatever you want. You can add comedy. And, and by the way, I like how you're still getting bullied as an adult. Like, Tom, you can't rap. I'm Tom, not getting bullied. I, I almost think your, they were like, I, your, I think they were jealous. Is this your mom and dad? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it was like, I, I think you don't, I, maybe you just don't pick up on vibes. I'm, I'm fucking with I'm fucking with you. Guys. I remember after the rap thing, <laughs> do you not get vibes someone or specifically said, <laughs> I was like, I feel like people were like, what are you doing? They were like, that's what I was thinking. What, what are you doing? And oh. I was like, well, I was, I'm, Good at this, yeah. Thing We're evolving. Um, I remember. I thought I was so. I was. I was. I thought I was cool. I was cool. <laughs> you should be the rapping comedy lawyer. You know you what? Be a you rap know what the lawyer. funniest thing right. is? I'm about to come out with a another album that's half rap, half jokes. Hell yeah! Do it's it. called the half right. joking mixtape. Where, where can people find you again? Do your plugs, and we're, we're oh, out of here. Okay, you. If, well, if you were paying attention at the beginning, yeah, uh, no, you yes. can find me on social. Karen Margol is K E R E N M A R G O L I S, and I'm doing a. A show at the stand called The Audacity, uh, November 29th. It's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. So get your tickets. It's going to be an awesome show. So far, we've got Mary Beth Barone. Forget who else. It's going to be awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm also uh, Tom McCaffrey722 on Instagram, TikTok. I have a book coming out in January 2023, Born Funny. Um, I have a podcast. I have two podcasts. One is called LE2B. The other one, I've kind of fallen by the wayside, but I still have it. It's Plot Smokers. Oh. You've done that. It's it's a funny premise. (laughs) It's like... The guests, we get high and then we talk about a movie, That's and, fine. And, I, and then I right. they try to describe the movie, kind of like drunk history, but with weed. And I'm Ray Devito. Uh, all, all my sponsors, uh, thank you, Guest Digital, for uh, having us, and then also uh, SilkCityHotSauce.com, uh, VictoryPost.com, um, L I C K Licks in Long Island City on Steinway, uh, and then my Patreon, Patreon.com backslash Ray Devito. All right, thanks, thank you guys for doing this. Thanks, Ray. That's our show. We're out.